Our primary purpose as a school district is to educate our students and prepare them for future success in college, career, and or military service. This requires that our students develop a solid foundation in their ability to read, solve equations, and solve problems. Goose Creek is working diligently to ensure that our focus is always on student learning and collaboration with staff to ensure our instructional practices are effective. I am Melissa Duarte and I am the Deputy Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. This video was developed to showcase the great achievements we have attained over the past few years. As a team, we are proud of our focus on student learning and support for mastery instruction on the campuses. You will hear from many students, teachers, and administrators who will highlight accomplishments that help us grow giants in Goose Creek. Hi, my name is Andrea Zapata, the principal at Alamo Elementary. For a third year in a row, Alamo has received all six distinctions, as well as an A rating for the 2018-19 school year, and we are very proud of this. Success can be contributed to our teachers, staff, students, and many other factors. Our teachers are professionals and will do whatever it takes to ensure all students make at least one year's growth. We believe building relationships with our students and families and building relationships with each other is a key factor in increased results. Our students and families trust us and know that we will do everything in our power to help our students succeed. We believe all students can learn and so they're expected to make at least one year's growth. This is accomplished by using the PLC process, Kagan strategies with fidelity, and holding all teachers, staff, and students accountable for their actions and their learning. We have embraced using the PLC process and instructional rounds. Each of these processes help our teachers to collect valuable data on what is working as well as what is not. We use the data to provide focused instruction. Both the PLC process and instructional rounds has helped us to keep the focus on the continuous improvement cycle. At Alamo, we have high expectations for all. We know our students come to us with hardships as evidenced by the Moat Casey report, but no one lets the data make us believe our students can't succeed. We use this data to provide experiences and opportunities for our students to close any gaps they may have. We don't accept the I can't do this attitude because we know with our support, they absolutely can. Listening to the teachers and learning what their needs and concerns are for their own professional growth are important. Teachers know when they receive training, they're, they're expected to return to campus and not only put the training into practice, but collaborate with other teachers and their paras to ensure as many students as possible benefit from trainings. The teachers are a great steward of their professional development. These things have contributed to scores improving each school year. We have seen growth each year and we are confident this school year will be no different if we continue our beliefs and our practices. Hello, I'm Gary Guy, principal of Highlands Junior School. Highlands Junior School has seen great academic progress over the past few years. The campus is continuously improving its implementation of the PLC process to address student and staff needs, including doing a better job of discussing data as a team. We're starting to look at and focus on the success of all the students at Highlands Junior and on the team. We're not just looking at my individual student success. We've built a supportive culture among our teachers and staff, and I think the kids see that, and it rubs off on them. They all feel supported. It's connected to the focus on building relationships with our kids. We also receive a lot of support from the district content specialists, especially content and pedagogy sessions that the specialists provide. The teachers always come back to campus talking about how beneficial these are and look forward to implementing some of the strategies that they've learned in their classrooms. These are a few areas that have led to the success this campus has achieved. Our teachers work hard, but we have a good time, yeah. <laughs> some more than others. Hi, my name is Holly Yarbrough and I teach English 2 at Sterling High School. Our PLC process last year really helped our team drive our instruction and change the focus from teaching to a focus on student learning. Because of the collaboration and ongoing inquiry and action process, we as a team were able to make significant strides regarding our students' achievement in the classroom and state tests. We wanted to make sure that we provided students with the tools and curriculum that would ensure that all students learned at high levels. To do this, our team had to commit to the PLC process and learn how to use the four guiding questions. This was how we were able to collaborate effectively together and use data to base instructional decisions. It was so important that we had time built in to do this every day. When we met, it was very structured so that we could use the time given effectively. 
My team this year can now benefit on the work we did last year and to continue to grow. Without this process, we wouldn't have been able to make such gains and growth for our students on the English Two Star and in the lessons that we did in our classrooms. There was always a missing piece that my team and I couldn't grasp as to why our students were not growing. We were able to finally find the missing piece through PLC and the work we did together from it. It was and is imperative that we continue this process to help our students' learning. As long as we get to continue the DeFore Solution Tree PLC process learning by design, we will continue to make gains in our students' achievement and see that all students will be able to learn at high levels and be successful. Hi, my name is Maricruz Rodriguez and I teach third grade math at Alamo Elementary. The bilingual ESL professional learning community has been the most impactful opportunity of my teaching career. I started teaching in Goose Creek CISD in 2014 and I have attended, planned for, and led my grade level bilingual PLC for the district. Under the leadership of Dr. Moreno Recio, I have seen the bilingual PLCs grow from grade level meetings with our bilingual specialists to teacher led PLCs tailored by grade level and subject. What I enjoy most about the bilingual PLCs is the opportunity to collaborate with other teachers, share resources and ideas that are making a difference in our classrooms, and using data to shape conversations about effective teaching and planning. At our bilingual PLCs, we review our norms and commitments and remind each other of our big ideas of PLC, learning, collaboration, and results. In addition to seeing our own skills grow, Teacher and the bilingual PLCs are more committed to the district and school itself because of our growing relationship with our colleagues and each other. At Alamo, we felt the impact of bilingual PLCs, so much so we initially asked our principal to support us in meeting as a school bilingual team on top of the regular bilingual PLC dates. I am so grateful for the administrators I worked with who granted us time and space to build our collective efficacy. Because of our bilingual PLCs, we have built a stronger bilingual team we have welcomed mentorship, fostered leadership, and depended on one another. Across the district, we see other students as our students. More importantly, what I realized then is still true now. Every teacher is a learner, no matter how many years of experience they have, and students benefit the most when teachers work together. Today, many of the bilingual teachers at Alamo are leading district PLCs with a commitment and a sense of urgency, like when we first started and more and more teachers and administrators from across the district are seeing what we have always known. At Goose Creek CISD's Bilingual PLCs, we grow giants. Hi, I'm Deb Silverberg and I'm the choir director at Baytown Junior School. It's difficult to speak about instructional rounds because I have so much to say and our time is limited. Instructional rounds is the most effective accessible and versatile professional development initiative that I've ever been a part of in 21 years of teaching. Instructional rounds can be applied to any level, any content area, and any configuration imaginable. We currently work as campus teams, but the process of instructional rounds could easily be adapted to work in content areas or vertically in our feeder patterns or cohorts. This would be an invaluable way to assess where skills are being learned or lost. Instructional rounds is not easy. It's not a magic bullet that's going to instantly solve our instructional problems. There are professional development initiatives that make that claim, but anything that is really going to instill change in our daily practice is going to take work. That is the real beauty of this system. It takes work and planning and training, but the more we put into it, the greater the yield in terms of student improvement. I have never had anything impact my own personal philosophy and instructional practice the way Instructional Rounds has. It has made me view myself and my instruction very differently, which has been such a blessing to me. After all of the years I've spent in the classroom, to now be able to view what I'm doing through a brand new lens has reinvigorated my love for instruction and it has made my classroom a much happier place for everyone. Hi, my name is Suzanne Keith and I'm working in our district as a co-facilitator of Instructional Rounds. We're in the fourth year of our Instructional Rounds journey. Instructional Rounds is an instructional practice that holds the promise of improving teaching and learning at scale. The focus is on the student with a structured process that begins with identifying a student learning problem the school wants to improve. 
Instructional rounds is an instructional practice that involves classroom observation and reflection on a problem of practice. Instructional rounds is rooted in the belief that adult learning about teaching and learning in the context of a real classroom with real students and a real teacher is key to improvement of our practice. The focus is on adult learning about what constitutes good teaching and learning. It's about, deep, it's about thinking deeply and critically regarding what instructional moves causes learning. It's about providing a structure where educators can learn how to continually improve the most powerful lever they have in the learning process, instruction. There are two observational structures in rounds, network site visits and internal rounds. An instructional round network is made up of multiple schools that conduct instructional rounds at each school in the network. Each school receives one network site visit per year. The network site is a great day, but it's just one day. It is what the school and the participants of the network do every other day of the year that determines if instructional rounds will fulfill its promise. Internal rounds occur throughout the year and provide the school with feedback regarding ongoing progress around the problem of practice. To sustain the work, the school team creates a momentum plan. It is a fluid document that will be altered as new learning and or new evidence indicates a change will improve the campus plan. Instructional rounds provides a framework for learning so schools can get better at getting better. My name is Cami Hale. I'm the ELA Administrator for Goose Creek CISD. The goal of the district's ELA program is to empower every child with the literacy tools necessary to thrive in a global community. With this goal in mind, the Goose Creek CISD ELA Department worked in conjunction with Dr. Duarte and classroom teachers to revise the district's philosophy of early literacy, as well as the literacy program and its components. The revised program consists of a comprehensive balanced literacy approach to reading, writing, phonics, and word study. A comprehensive balanced literacy approach includes a balance of reading, writing, speaking, and listening activities and is a social endeavor that provides a variety of daily instructional strategies to meet the needs of all diverse learners. It is taught in the content of authentic literature and includes explicit instruction in whole group, small group, and individual settings. In order to guarantee that teachers have time to cover all the necessary components necessary to meet the needs of our students, the curriculum department worked to realign the instructional minutes needed to provide a strong literacy foundation. With this realignment, we included time for daily explicit phonics instruction for grades K through five. We believe that this will help to make sure our students are reading on grade level by the time they reach third grade, as well as help to close any learning gaps for our students in grades three through five. In addition, the ELA department has worked hard to provide teachers with a great curriculum documents and training on the valuable resources that were adopted by the district. Ongoing training is provided each six weeks and followed up with classroom modeling and individual coaching on campuses. Our department has also provided training for campus administrators over the new curriculum. We've assisted with schedule modifications and provided them with the literacy look for us in the classroom. I'm Kevin Robleski, the science coordinator. The four core curriculum revisions are ongoing throughout the year. Each year, we align the year at a glance, scope and sequence, pacing calendar, and resources to reflect our vision and mission of developing the whole child. Beginning last May and finishing over the summer, the four core areas have aligned our curriculum to have consistent language as described in our strategic plan. K-12 teachers and content specialists have identified non-negotiable standards, resources, and essential questions to support our campuses as they continue with the PLC process. Curriculum and pedagogy training documents have been aligned to the visible learning progressions and success criteria to support teachers in their lesson creation and clarity. The CNI department participates with our campuses during the PLC and visible learning trainings to be sure our documents are supporting our district initiatives. Supporting our students and teachers is our number one goal. Hi, my name is Karen Thomas and I'm an Area Executive Director for Goose Creek. 
As teachers, our goal is for students to leave our classroom achieving higher than when they entered at the beginning of the school year. As a district, we hope that based on the state accountability system, our student achievement scores increase each year as well. In 2017-18, our overall district score was a 78. For the 2018-19 school year, we were so excited to share that our score increased from a 78 to an 87. That growth is partly due to the fact that we have put some systems in place to ensure administrators, teachers, and support staff are receiving similar training and support across the district. A group of campus administrators and district level staff created several handbooks to assist principals in that training. The PLC model the district has adopted asks teachers to ask four questions when planning for instruction. A PLC handbook was created to help principals keep their staff on track and help them with each of those four questions. The handbook provides a reminder of our district vision and also includes our expectations for the PLC process, visuals, definitions, and suggestions for how to help keep the PLC process moving to increase student achievement. We also had a team create a handbook for the RTI or response to intervention process. Because the RTI process is so complex, campuses can use the handbook to help them maneuver through the online system we use to track students who are in RTI. It also provides campuses with suggestions for research-based interventions, examples of tracking forms, and a model for helping make decisions when moving students through the various RTI tiers. The last handbook we created was a professional learning handbook. This manual provided suggested topics and resources for principals to use to help our new teachers during their first, second, and third years of teaching in Goose Creek. The team also included topics and resources for first-year principals as well as for our existing principals. When all staff members have a common understanding of our district processes and systems for what's best for students, it helps enrich our instructional conversations and that is a win for our students. My name is Sarah Flushi and I am the coordinator for secondary language arts and foreign languages. Educational equity and relationship building continue to be a priority in Goose Creek. Equity and relationships are really two sides of the same coin because they both thrive when we value differences, when we create an environment for students where differences are not just tolerated, but are welcomed, an environment where every student knows they belong. That's why our core values include the phrase diversity respected, and that's why our strategic plan includes goals around developing a culturally relevant curriculum where students can see themselves in the classroom learning. This year, we've taken our focus a step further by visiting with staff members in surrounding districts about their work on equity. We also collaborated with Dr. Roger Cleveland, who presented a full-day professional development for campus and district representatives. In January, those same representatives will share their learning with teachers, empowering classroom educators as they work with our diverse student body. But that's not all. In the language arts department, committees of teachers are identifying culturally relevant and engaging texts, ensuring an educational experience where differences become our strength, not our weakness. It's exciting work that demands courage and tough conversations, and I am so proud to be part of this process in Goose Creek. Hello, my name is Amy Henderson, and I'm the coordinator of mathematics. The curriculum and instruction team is working hard to improve teaching and learning in our district, and the district increase from 78 to 87 shows we are making great progress academically to promote student success. I'm excited to share our latest work with you, which is creating a high yield strategies handbook to assist in the development of master teachers. First, the CNI team identified the district high yield strategies focus five, relationship building, actionable feedback, teacher and student clarity, student engagement, and effective questioning. We recently mapped out all the components needed to address the who, what, when, where, why, and how of each strategy to guide us in our next level of work. Our goal is to provide teachers with a comprehensive toolkit to help them become the master teacher they are meant to be. In addition to the handbook, we will provide district training and support focused around the high yield strategies and specifically how to implement the strategies effectively in the classroom to strengthen student learning. We are excited about the work we are doing and we look forward to sharing our finished product with you soon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Precious Remenick. I'm the Director of Counseling and Student Wellness. The Counseling and Student Wellness Department helps with imparting skills 
and facilitating learning opportunities in an active and preventative manner that ensures students can experience school success through academic, college and career, and personal social development experiences. We aim to provide equitable and accessible services for all students and families. In order to ensure that we are assisting in developing the whole child, the Counseling and Student Wellness Department has assessed needs, gathered input, organized and established student support services for our district. Because our commitment to reaching our district's core values, within the last year, our district was awarded the Project AWARE grant valuing over $4 million. This grant will aid us in continuing our work by increasing awareness of mental health issues, providing training for school personnel and other adults who interact with school-aged youth to detect and respond to mental health issues, and connecting school-aged youth who may have behavioral health issues. Because Hurricane Harvey had a direct impact on our community, we were awarded a Real Rebuild Texas grant for our secondary campuses. The focus is social emotional learning curriculum, emotional backpack training, relationship smarts curriculum, and the empathy school training. This semester, during the School Behavioral Health Conference, we received a bronze award from Greater Houston Mental Health America. Our efforts in advancing the knowledge and skills related to school mental health practices, research training, and policy was recognized. Eight years ago, we started to assess the needs of our students and school personnel. We looked at data, surveys, community needs, state and federal mandates. During this time, we gathered input from our stakeholders. We organized and established protocols, processes, and procedures that campuses could begin to utilize. Some of the protocols included instituting student support plans. We created school protocols for dealing with the death of students and faculty members. We established access to behavior support services. The secondary student support team was started, and we also initiated student transition plans for students returning to their home campus. As we utilized data and created systems to serve students and support schools, we knew the importance of collaboration and partnerships. Through United Way of Greater Baytown area in Chambers County, we established a partnership with the Pelchin Children's Center which afforded us the opportunity to provide school-based counseling services at our campuses. As we worked collaboratively with the various departments and organizations, we had to train on all these supports and there was also a need to provide workshops and camps for our students and families. Annually, we have provided Life After Graduation, Summer Summit, Tadpole Camp and Fish Camp, Youth Mental Health First Aid Training, Care for the Educators, engaging parents and families in education series, bridging unmet supports, which are bus field trips, trauma-informed care and emotional backpack training, and the Goose Creek CISD menu of 10 trainings. Whew, breathe and process all of that. As you can see, we have a department full of busy bees. We always engage in a cycle of continuous improvement because it is important to see our students grow. We are grateful to serve the students and families in Goose Creek. We are thankful for all of the partnerships, collaboration amongst our professionals. The Counseling and Student Wellness Department is committed to serving and supporting our schools in behavioral, social, and emotional wellness efforts. Good morning, Xavier. Welcome back. Thank you. My name is Xavier, and we celebrate tennis at Ashbell Smith Elementary. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. We celebrate students here in the Asheville Smith Elementary and oh yeah, come on. Good morning. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning. Our teachers make us feel feel welcome. Asheville students helps our whole family. Asheville.
Asheville Smith makes our families feel welcomed and celebrated. And Asheville Smith helps our families with attendance, academics, and other resources uh, we may need. Asheville Smith helps by calling to check on us when we're absent. Good morning, this is Ms. V with Asheville Smith and we were just calling in regards to your child's absence. Is there anything we can help you with? Alrighty, well don't forget to bring a note tomorrow, thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Holland and I'm the principal of Gentry Junior School. We have three goals that we hope to meet using our therapy dog, Rebel. Goal one is to improve reading skills, comprehension, and increase confidence in literary interest. Goal two is to lessen the emotional trauma of a critical incident or event for students, teachers, and staff. Goal three, increase empathy and compassion. What we see is an adorable four-legged visitor that continues to improve self-esteem, acceptance from others, and lifts moods with excitement and laughter. Rebel has helped to improve the overall climate of our campus. Hi, my name is Bradley Jackson and I teach life skills at Gentry Junior High School. And I noticed a marked difference in the behavior of my students once Rebel began to visit our campus. I even taught a lesson on how owning a pet can decrease feelings of loneliness and teach how to care for something other than yourself. My students were always very excited when Rebel would come to visit. They were happier, more attentive, and became more caring towards each other as a result. I have one student in particular, his name was Jaden, that Rebel had a very profound impact upon. He was in sixth grade at the time, and the entire school year he was very shy and afraid to try new things. When he saw Rebel, his eyes lit up. I could tell he wanted to pet Rebel, but he was afraid. One of my paraprofessionals led Jaden to Rebel, and to everyone's surprise, he pet the dog. After that day, I believe he was more excited than all of my other students to see Rebel. Since that day, he tries new things all of the time, even if he's afraid. Rebel definitely served as a positive influence in his life and in the lives of all of my students. My name is Wendy Madrid and I teach our Carver Elementary the two-way dual program. So far, the dual language two-way program model has been a success. My students, both English dominant and Spanish dominant, are becoming biliterate, not only bilingual. They are reading and writing in two languages, Spanish and English. It is amazing to see students learning how to speak, read and write in a second language. Engaging students in literature from another language and observing the progression of the language growth is amazing. The students are acquiring cogn cognitive flexibility as they are learning two languages. I have noticed that the students are becoming more comfortable with their second language. They are even engaging others in conversations outside the classroom. For example, this week I witnessed an English-speaking student having a conversation with a Spanish-speaking custodian. The student greeted the custodian in Spanish and asked her how she was doing. The custodian understood everything and she engaged the, the student in a conversation. Dual language students are also becoming more culturally responsive because of their interactions with a mix of students and languages in the dual classroom. My class consists of Hispanic, Anglo, and African American students, and they have learned to appreciate and value each other's cultures. I believe that the dual language classroom has opened the doors for more students' curiosity and empathy about the world and people from different backgrounds. Dual language students are progressing in the continuum of biliteracy. By developing into biliterate, bilingual, and bicultural students. The student's growth is a testimony to the dual language two-way program model success over our current transitional early exit program. Our students in the dual language program are progressing in becoming fully proficient in English than the students in the current transitional early exit program. The dual language program is a culturally responsive program as the students maintain their native language and acquire a second language simultaneously. I'm proud to be part of such an exciting program in Goose Creek, and I'm hoping it expands to other campuses. Hi, I'm Renee Dillon, and I'm the Director for Career and Technical Education in Goose Creek. The Curriculum and Instruction Department is excited about the large growth in enrollment in the Career and Technical Education programs. With support for building a more rigorous curriculum to serve all students, advanced academic students, as well as students wanting to earn industry certifications. CT enrollment has doubled over the last 10 years. This has allowed more students to complete a program of study, earn an endorsement, and earn industry credentials. 
Our most amazing growth has been in the STEM career cluster, which is critical to the continuing success of our surrounding petrochemical community. With the addition of Project Lead the Way Engineering Curriculum and the STEM Academy at Lee High School, the number of students taking STEM-related classes has grown over 800%. Our district is also demonstrating growth in other areas that are targeted by our lo local labor market, with 300% more students in our welding-related programs, including Ag Mechanics and the Manufacturing Academy at Stewart Career Tech High School. Hiring well-prepared new teachers is high on the targeted occupation list for the Gulf Coast, and we are proud to say that our current 227% increase in enrollment in this area will increase even more with the addition of the Career Academy for Future Educators at Sterling next year. Our aging population has increased the need for healthcare workers and our Health Science Academy has added more rigorous courses in biomedical science and helped double the number of students preparing for careers in the medical field. The population growth in Baytown has also increased the need for hospitality and restaurant industry. So the district has boosted enrollment in these courses 156% to make sure that no one in the area goes hungry. Stuart Career Tech Culinary Academy students are taking this one step further, preparing to manage their own restaurant next year. Our Global Business Academy has increased enrollment in the business-related courses 90%, and our law enforcement enrollment has grown 154% to keep our citizens safe. And although you normally think of career and technical education serving only the business and technically minded student, we have increased the enrollment of our students in arts and multimedia programs almost 500%. Growth in the arts is only surpassed by the growth in STEM. Our department is so excited to be able to meet the diverse career interests of all Goose Creek students. Hi, I'm Rick Reyes. I'm a student here at Stewart Career Tech High School, and I'm here to talk about how Stuart Career Tech High School is my preferred high school. Um, so I want to start off with the teachers here because the teachers are very important in how kids learn and how kids interact with each other. And from personal experience with all these kids here and all these teachers, the teachers really, really care about having us be successful, not just with grades, but helping us be successful for the future um, when we graduate. And the kids here, while not all of them are the greatest, you know, some personal things, the majority of these kids really care about what they're doing, uh, whether it be in their academy or whether it be in a specific class that they're in. Uh, me personally, I am in the Automotive Diesel Tech Academy. Uh, our instructors truly, truly want us to learn as much as we can in this four-year period that we have, me being in my third year. I've come from learning, knowing nothing about vehicles at all, and now I know basics and a little more advanced uh, situations and uh, things about engines that I never thought I'd learn about. Um, and my experience with all these teachers and instructors has been the, the greatest experience of my life. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change my mind about this school. I wouldn't have, uh, I can't. I can't even say, you know, I can't even, it's just, this school means the world to me. It, it just, that's helped me come from being a shy person who wouldn't be in front of this camera currently uh, to me being a student ambassador, giving tours and going to schools and recruiting kids uh, to come to this fantastic school. I'm Susan Jackson, principal of Goose Creek Memorial High School, and I want to share with you some of the amazing things going on at Goose Creek Memorial, where we provide limitless opportunities in college, career, and military readiness for our students. We have partnered with Lee College to currently have over 1,300 seats in dual credit, which include not only core classes, but also CTE courses. This results in a savings of over $1.1 million in tuition, not counting books, rooms, and fees. We have had three students who have earned an associate's degree prior to graduation and three currently on track to graduate this year with an associate's degree. I'm also proud to say that 20% of our senior class is currently taking college courses and will graduate with 12 hours or more, many with 36 hours. Also, we've expanded our ROTC program to have more than 140 cadets with 56 already enlisted in various branches of the military over the last four years. 
As we discuss CTE, I would like to highlight the many industry partners GCM currently has. We have many business partnerships such as Beacon Federal Credit Union, Airmark, IKEA, Walgreens, GCCISD HR Department, Chevron Phillips, Monument Chemical, Patience ER, Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy, and they have helped us form mentorships, internships, and real-world experiences for our students. Partnerships along with our amazing CTE staff have helped us complete, our students complete, over 850 certificates to date. To highlight the Global Business Academy, we are the only school in Texas that has been accepted into the MBA Research High School of Business program. This increases the level of rigor in our business pathway and ensures students will graduate with an associate's degree in the business or obtain 42 hours in B Core Complete while still completing many numerous business and industry certifications. We are currently on the road to be a national demo status with the National Coalition of Career Academy this year. To highlight the AVID system, we have gone from 66 students to 320 students over the last five years. Most importantly, I would like to stress that our scholarship started at $125,000 5 years ago, and last year in 2019, we ended with $7.5 million. Currently, we are also on the road to becoming an AVID National Demo School. We will be the only one in the Houston area. I do not want to steal the thunder from Ian, so I will allow him to speak more on the AVID and the Global Business Academy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ian Tang. I'm a senior here at Goose Creek Memorial High. Uh, I'm a part of the Global Business Academy and AVID program here. Uh, because of these two programs, it helped me be involved in National Honor Society, TRAC, Chick-fil-A Leaders Academy, and uh, FBLA, which stands for Future Business Leaders of America and we're supposed to go into competition in spring and we're going to get better hands-on experience on the business fields and uh, other opportunities. Uh, I'm also an intern at Walgreens and we learn about the POS system and we learn about the logistics and behind, behind the scenes of how Walgreens run. Uh, because of these uh, opportunities I've taken, it helped me grow as a person on what I wanted to be when I grow up because at first when I came here I didn't know what I wanted to be but since I had all these options to take, I have a better knowledge on who I wanted to be and what I want to be when I grow up. So thank you, and hopefully we'll see what the future holds for me. Hi, I'm Carlin Caldwell, and I'm the CTE specialist at Robert E. Lee High School over the STEM Academy. This November, the Robert E. Lee High School STEM Academy was nationally recognized by the National Career Academy Coalition in Philadelphia. The Academy was reviewed and scored based on the NCAC's National Standards of Practice, which are considered best practices for career academies. Our STEM Academy is now not only accredited by the state of Texas as a T-STEM Academy, but is now one of five model academies in Texas and one of nine model STEM academies in the nation. Our tremendous Academy students, staff, and leadership all played an integral part of receiving this national accreditation. Without the dedication and support from Goose Creek CISD, and Robert E. Lee High School, the STEM Academy would not be thriving like it is today. The vast opportunities provided to our students through the Academy truly help GCCISD grow giants. Hello, I'm Joe Farnsworth, principal of Robert E. Lee High School, the flagship high school of Goose Creek. Um, if I was a governing board member and I'm asked, what is the T STEM Academy at uh, Robert E. Lee High School? This is what I would want you to know. The T-STEM status that we've earned is through the Texas Education Agency and it's been a prestigious honor over the last two to three years to go through this rigorous process where TEA has come into our campus, audited our classes, audited our curriculum, looked at our graduation rates, and have certified that we are a fully fledged academy that has earned the T-STEM status. One of the signature components of our T-STEM status is our business partner relationships. We meet every month with members from the city of Baytown, with Covestro, with ExxonMobil, and this wonderful partnership was recently recognized last spring through the Baytown Chamber of Commerce, Commerce for having a 30-year relationship with ExxonMobil, and out of all the Goose Creek schools, Lee High School was nominated as the most premier school with these business partnerships. We're so very proud of our business partnerships and the T-STEM Academy, and we hope that someday you can come walk our classes. Hi, I'm Kim Fox, Academic Dean at Lee High School. Lee's vision of how technology and iPads enhance learning 
It is rooted in our belief that we are preparing ganders for skills that will best prepare them for college and career. We recently met with Apple executives and other Apple distinguished schools that are creating a foundation for technology and how we can make career exploration match our students and their needs. So you say to yourself, how does a hospital chart their records? Not in the old paper and pencil ways. Now we use electronic devices. You could take it another step and say, how does an operator take process variable readings? They used to do it on notebook paper and tablets, but now technology's changed everything. Readings are now scanned and entered and systems are uploaded into databases for preventative maintenance and scheduling. We want our ganders ready for technology and how they can implement that into the real world. Goose Creek's technology supports are what have helped make that be possible with the one-to-one -one iPad initiative and our tremendous support from the Educational Technology Department. Teachers have the opportunity to learn in groups, working with wonderful people like Lori Roberts to make sure that our teachers are ready to meet the needs of our students in the classroom. The mission of Goose Creek is to develop the whole child. As you can see, the curriculum and instruction department, as well as campuses, have focused on developing and enhancing each learner's intellectual, social, and emotional well-being. From curriculum documents to instructional practices, we strive for excellence in teaching and learning. Our goal is to achieve high levels of performance and success by both staff and students to positively impact this community.